Welcome to Trading the Markets. My name is Wichel Joseph. I'm not a financial advisor, so everything here is for um, educational purposes only. So now we just dive, we're going to just dive right in the charts since you're here. We get started with whoever's here first. Um, so GM, yeah, so um, look at this chart right here. You see this right here? This is GM on, on the daily. Notice yeah. how GM, I don't know if this is this what made you um, want to play GM, uh, MJ, but notice all these touches on support. Yep. And when I got, when I first was notified about GM, it was right here, you know? Um, and then and then they made this double bottom. It crossed my alarm and I still didn't get in. I still didn't get in. Well, I got in, but I didn't get in because the thing about it, you can't play everything. You know what I mean? Right. Right, and right, right, right. GM is not a stock that I normally trade. So before I actually um, hop into it for real, I'm like, let me um, go hop in on demo because what happened, the thing, number one, whenever you play any option, the charts could look great and as beautiful. But it doesn't matter if your contracts are not liquid, because if your contracts are not liquid, you 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 you'll be buying something that nobody else wants to buy, and you'll be stuck in the trade. So right. even, so sometimes it's better to buy shares than it is to buy options. But it all depends on how liquid the options are. So so when I was so when I was looking at the options, um, they were like um sixty five. So like the spread was like twenty and thirty. So 20 and 30, that's a good 50% um, spread, you know, between the numbers, between the bid and the ask. I like, I like it for it to be more of a 20% or less. So, that, so that's why it was in that liquid. And I seen them go down like 15 bucks. And then they shot up, like, let me see if I can show you um, my demo real quick. So here's the chart, right? So right now, if you notice, it's, it's probably going to retest that line. So if it comes to this line again, depending on what the reaction it does, you can go whichever way. You know what I mean? Does that make sense to you, MJ? No, absolutely. Um, I started, I, I really just started looking at it a couple days ago. GM actually outsold, you know, you know, like my area is like the auto industry, man. So I'm like really close to that industry. So I, I, a lot of the option plays that I play are always going to be like auto industry related. But mm -hmm. they actually outsold uh, Ford as far as EV orders so far mm. for the last quarter. Uh, and that's actually the first time that that's happened uh, uh, since, really since Elon took off with Tesla. So they have overtaken Ford as the number one EV producer right now. So I'm, I'm kind of mm. curious to see like, maybe it's like our earnings play as well as- Oh yeah, earnings, earnings is coming up soon, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like, earnings, earnings is coming up April 25th. Yeah, April 25th. So, oh yeah, yeah, that probably could be your test. I would, I would, I would definitely wait to see for it to come back to this thirty under thirty four dollars or thirty four dollar area and see how it reacts. Because look at how many times we bounced off support. So all these times you could have bought it off support and you would have made a lot of money every time this happened. But right now, if you look at it, you see it's, a, it's doing a head and shoulders. Like you got, you guys can see it right here. Um, yeah, it'll take. So here's the head. Here's the left shoulder. Here's the right shoulder. Right. So it's, it's doing the head and shoulders. And as you can see in the past, like when it's a head and shoulders, like this was a head and shoulders right here. This, it's all about the neckline. It's all about how do, how do you react when it comes to the bottom. And basically this blue line is the neckline. If I wanted to do a vertical neckline, I could go like that. But basically when it comes down back up in here, how does it react? Does it break through? Because if it breaks and does something like this, then I know it's going down. But if it comes down here and it bounces, and there's like a double bottom or anything like that, then, then I know it's, it's going to go up. The main thing is we don't got to know what's going to happen. We just got to be ready to react when it happens and we know where to get active. But now let me show you, let me show you the um, options. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the chart. So I played them on, on the demo, like I said. Um, let's see, share my screen. Yeah, I, like I think they went. They, as you can see, it went down before it was even crazier. But so right here, um, let me see. Did I sell them? Or oh, I think I sold them actually. Um, but let me see. Do I have my history? Let me see. Um, account statements. So this is how um how you go back and look at your history and stuff. Trade history. Right, right. 
Oh, this is the stock. Um, I don't, so I sold them, but basically from what I remember, um, they were, the, I bought them for about 64. They went to about two, I played a weekly, they went to about two, two, two hundred dollars and change from $64. So that's a good six times four. That's a good, um, 300%. They went 300%. Um, the GM. So, so, so back to the, the chart, if you have bought, um, the chart. But if you had bought them off, off the trend line touches, you'd be you'd be happy. I'll tell you that. Like if you had bought any one of these touches, any 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 one of these touches, look right here, bounce off support, right here, bounce off support, right here, bounce off support, right here, bounce off support came up. Came back down, bounced the second time. This is a per. This right here is a perfect entry. This is what you want to look for every time you enter. You want it to hit your level, bounce off, and come back to that level before you get in. So a lot of times, like like let's say, let's say right, um, you um you missed this entry. So you say you missed this. You didn't get in right here. Wait for it to come back. It's okay to miss a play because guess what? It's most likely going to come back a lot of times. So that will give you the perfect entry. And then you just playing it from here to here. That was that um 64 to like 28, 250 um per contract on the GMs. But um all right. And um anybody anybody new here? Because I have some stuff for new people. Um I just want to make sure they're here. Yes, peace and good evening. Thank you for the invite. Oh, thank you for coming. Um, happy to have you, Marsha. Yeah, thank you. I'm really looking forward to learning and just like really getting my bars up with training right. technical so, analysis. So, so this part right here is going to be for you. Um, and anybody else that just wants to review, um, you know, it doesn't hurt. Okay. So let me get into it. All right. Um, all right, so first thing, Marsha, before I even explain anything, I want you to know that it's all mental and it's all psychological. And if you can master that, everything else will be easy. So this right here is um, a tree that um, I got from this group that I was in called BWO, but mm -hmm. I still use it today and it's very helpful. So first thing you gotta know is that you're a consistent winner. That's the first thing you have to know is that you're a consistent winner. Because in this game, most people are not consistent. Then you have to know your edges. I objectively identify my edges. Your edges is just an advantage. It's just an advantage where there's a higher likelihood of one thing happening over another. So once you know your edges, you're set. Then you got to define your risk. So when we trade in the market, we're not trying to make money. We're trying not to lose money. You know, if you, if you play defense first, because you have, to, you have to survive long enough for that good play to come to you and you have the money and you're ready to act. Because a lot of times you'll spend your money on plays that you don't need to be spending your money on. And then when that good play comes, you don't have enough money to play. So then um, once you define your risk, you have to, you have to um, accept it. You know, so when you trade, don't put anything that you're not willing to lose. Because everybody's thinking about the upside, but a lot of people, they don't accept the risk because they put in the money, but they only see the money they can make. They don't see the money that they could lose. And, they got, and if you think about losing first, then you put this game a lot better. And then, and then um, I completely I act on my edges without reservation or hesitation. So once you know you have advantage, you know it's go time, you have to just go. Because you protect yourself, you'll have your stop loss, and then you just let it go from there. Um, I continually monitor my susceptibility to making errors. When you make mistakes, um, start journaling. So I have a journal where I journal my trades and that's how I get to know how I'm doing. Like if you see my video um, where I made the, the, the trade on rig, that was from my online journal. Um, pay myself as the market makes money available. This is the most important one because a lot of reason why most people lose is because they hold it too long and they overstay their welcome. You know, someone told me, um, think about it. Like if you were stealing, you're not going to hang around. You're going to be out. So like, that's one way of just thinking about it in the market and then never violating these principles. So these are some rules 
I'll post in the Discord just for you to start getting um used to using them as a guide for your trading. All right. I am familiar with that much. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> now let's get into it. So do you, um what is the stock? So um if you guys don't know what the stock is, but I, I figure I would start at the very, very basic. A stock is a security. What is a security? It's a tradable financial asset. So when you buy a stock, it represents ownership of a piece of a company. So example, security, stock, bonds, shares, mutual funds, all that, right? Um, units of stocks are called shares. As a partial owner, your individual stock goes up and down. So it's called a share because you share in the profits and you share in the losses. Why would anybody, why would anybody buy stocks? The reason why you want to buy stocks is for long-term growth. Because the money dollars you put in today, one day will be worth a lot more in the future. And historically, the S&P 500, which is the biggest index, returns about 11% per year, which is much better than any bank and a lot of other things you can go to. Now, what is a stock option? A stock option is a derivative. All a derivative means, it's, um, it derives its price from something else. It gets its price from something else. It gets its price from stocks. That's why it's called a derivative. But the way I explain it, it's a, it's a contract that is like, that allows you to buy and sell stocks on layaway. I don't know how old you are, Marsha. You may or may not know about layaway, but layaway was when you, let's say you, let's say you see something you want to buy because you like the price of it, but you don't want to leave and the price goes up. So you buy, you, you buy a ticket, you get this, you pay, you pay some money, they give you this coupon, this ticket, and then anytime by a certain date, you can come, you can go back and redeem this ticket and buy whatever you're buying at that locked in price. So that's what an option is. It locks in a specific price for hundred shares of a stock. Does that make sense to you, Marsha? Because this is the this is the concept that a lot of people may struggle to grasp. No, it was, and that was a good analogy. Thanks, thanks. I, I tried. I put in work just to really make it simple. Um, so with that said, option contracts are not shares. They're contracts. Like, you know, so the contract, it locks in either the buying price or the selling price. If it locks in the buying price, it's a call. If it locks in the selling price, it's a put. But just like that layaway ticket, you have an expiration date. There's a deadline. So it's basically you putting a down payment on something you want to buy and getting a deadline. So and so now here's the thing. You don't. So if you go back right with this ticket and you go to the store, you give them the ticket. Now they're going to allow you to buy that product at the previous price that you locked in. Right. But you don't have to buy this this product, which is the shares. Because remember, we're locking in shares. We're locking in an order of 100 shares, a batch of 100 shares per contract, all right? So you don't actually have to go back and buy the actual um, product. Let's say like there was a jacket you liked, right? You don't have to go back with the layaway ticket and actually buy the jacket. What you can do, right? Let's say you locked it in the jacket. It was $100. Let's say the price of the jacket went up now. So now the price of that jacket went from like $100 to 150 now, now remember, you paid some money to get this coupon. Let's say you paid $50 for this coupon, for this layaway contract this, that lets you come back and buy at that price. So, um, what was I gonna say? So you lock, all right, so now you have an, so because the price of your jacket went up from $100 to 150, you have the option now, because guess what? The coupon that you paid 50 for, now it's worth a hundred. So you can either go back to the store, give them the coupon, buy your jacket, or take this coupon, sell it to somebody and make 50 bucks real quick. Does that make sense to you? It does. Yeah. So, so, so the way I, the way, so you don't have, so when you actually use the, use the contracts for the intended purpose of buying the shares, that's called exercising. So you don't have to exercise the contract. 
you can sell it back to the market for a premium. So I compare it to sex and condoms because it helps people understand. And so the, the, the end goal of sex is to have a child, right? To procreate. So instead of having that child, you rather just take the pleasure and not get the child. Same way you, you take the money and not get the stock. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah, I came up with these analogies. So, um, so now the whole thing is understanding our premiums. The premium is the price that you pay for the contract. I'm giving you a crash course, so definitely slow me down um, if I'm going too fast. So remember, one contract locks in 100 shares. So you pay the premium that gives you the right to buy the shares later if you want, or you could just sell the premium. You could sell the, the contract back to the market for a higher premium than what you paid. But understand that since one contract locks in 100 shares, whatever price you see displayed, you have to multiply it by 100. So if you see an option contract listed as two, two cents, it's really $2. If you see it listed as $1.50, it's really $150. And if you see it listed as $15.55, it's really $1,555. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. It does, because right. the yeah. price is for just one share or the contract blocks in 100 shares. And so you have to multiply it times 100 to yeah, get the dollar amount. Pretty quick. Uh, you know, I, I thought um, you, you'd have questions by now. So either you're, you're following really quick or I'm doing a good job. I don't know. <laughs> um how to make profits so to make profits if the stock makes your expected because because you remember you can either lock in the buying price or the selling price so if the stock goes toward goes you in your direction towards the price that you're locking in you will start to make profit because your contract will appreciate the same way that that jacket let's say you you're betting that the jacket the price of the jacket is going to go up if that jacket starts to go up, the amount that you paid for that coupon for that premium is going to go up as well. But now um, understand um, calls and puts and why they um, make money in a certain direct, like how they make money. So, okay, so um, let me, get, I got to give you some examples. Um, all right, we're going to go to actual um, options contract option contracts go robin hood real quick and then i'll just go to any stock i'll go to tilray so we it's a dispensary stock all right so um do you still see my screen you guys see tilray i do yep it's a marijuana stock and um 420 is around the is around the corner. It's April. So seasonality is a big thing with stocks. A lot of things repeat throughout the year on like their movements. Um, so this is maybe something we may need to start watching. But um, now let's say we want to trade this. So this button, if you're on Robinhood, this button right here that says trade till rate options, it won't be there unless you enable options. That's a whole separate video. But once you figure out how to enable options, you'll see this trade till rate option button. You click it and you'll see this right here. This right here is called the option chain because it literally moves like a chain. Because notice right here, you see the price is $2. The share price is $2.47. So now um, all these above and below it, these, these are gonna move up and down like a chain depending on where the price moves. You'll see like the, the strike prices move up and down. That's why it's called the option chain. So first thing I want you to notice is there's going to be a lot of things to notice. Um, first thing to notice, I'm buying, right? You can also sell to open, but we're not going to talk about that. What I'm buying, though, is a call. I, like I said, I could buy the call or the put. If I think it's going to go up, if, I, if you think it's going to go up, you buy a call. If you think it's going to go down, you buy a put. And now let me explain how they make money, okay? So the price right now is what, $2.47? So let's say um, I wanna lock in um, this $2 price right here. You see, so okay, so right here, 
is the strike price. That's the that's the actual option. That's the actual price that you're locking in. So the options are listed by strike price because you pick what strike you're locking in and every single option on a different price moves differently. Okay, so then you have your ask right here, ask price. These are the premiums. This is how much you're paying. You understand? So could you tell me, Marsha, how much would it cost for me to buy this $2 call option right here? You said the $2 one? Yeah, so so this is the price right here. Based the on premium. the ask price? Yep, as price. That's the that's the premium right now. So how much would it cost? For me to buy this based on that? No, no, no. So no? remember, remember the slide. When you see it as cents, it controls uh, um a hundred. So you got to times it by a hundred. You got to multiply forty eight cents times a hundred. So basically, it'd be forty eight dollars. Forty eight even. Got it. Yeah, forty eight dollars. Because just like um, what's the slide? I'll, I'll bring it back. Um, this one. A oh, wrong one. Hold on. Yeah. So even even right here, remember. So cent, two cents is two dollars. A dollar fifty is a hundred fifty. A right. thousand. You know, ten dollars is a thousand. So every so one easy way to do it, if you want to multiply anything by a hundred, all you have to do is move the decimal place two times. Now it's after the two, making it 2.0, which is two. You know what I mean? If you move the decimal place two times, that's the actual number. That's how you multiply by 100. So yeah, it is math, but it, it's math that that pays. Um, so now going back to the example. So right here, so um, it costs 40, it's gonna cost me $48 to lock in the $2 price. Does that make sense to you? It does. But now, why, why, why is that beneficial? Let me, let me explain. Uh, clear, let me clear everything. So think about it, right? This is, this is $2.47, 47, 47 cents. So if I was to buy 100, because remember, one, one option contract locks in, controls 100 shares. So if I multiply this by 100, it would cost me $247 to buy 100 shares of this stock if i'm trying let's say let's say i think it's going to go up so normally i'd buy you know the, the the general way to do it is just buy the shares but if i'm trying to buy 100 shares it's going to cost me 247 dollars but i can buy an option that locks in the two dollar price for only 48. you know what i mean so i could still make money but it would only cost me 48 dollars to participate does that make sense Yes, that does make sense. Why, why is the, the strike price $2? I guess I'm not understanding that one. Okay, so, 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 buy, so the strike price is $2. You can, I, can buy all, I can buy all these different strike prices. Strike price, these are the, these are the actual options that you can buy. You have mm -hmm. different varying, um, varying distance. To, they're varying distances away from the actual share price. You know what I mean? So... I'm not sure if I understand your question. Like you, when you say yeah, why, I'm just trying to, mm -hmm. so you're paying the forty-eight dollars to lock in the two-dollar price. Yeah, that, that's my that's my layaway ticket. Because let's just say I seen it was two dollars, or or the benefit. So if I seen it was two forty-eight, I can lock in that two forty-eight right now. But options give you the option to lock it in at, at a cheaper price, at a lower you price. Got it. it. You okay. got to pay more to lock it in at a cheaper price. Notice how. The 150 call, how much how much money would it cost to buy this? To lock in the 150 price. Dollar fifty price. 305. $305. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so okay. So un, first thing you gotta understand is how do you make how does the contract make money? Okay. So since we're locking in the buying price, um, we 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 wanna we want the price. Of this stock to be above the price that we're locking in. Does that make sense? So, so, so notice uh, this right here is the expiration date. So these expire um, tomorrow, as you can see, April 6th. So these, so there's only one day on these, right? Um, but basically by tomorrow, 
I would just need to, I need this to be at least above um, two dollars, you know, to make any type of money. But I, I also have a break even price right here, where to break even it needs to be above two forty two. So that's why um, right now it would actually let's say tomorrow comes and the price is exactly where it is right now. I would still make some. I would still I wouldn't lose money basically. But the point is this, right? Um, you're locking in the $2 price. So let's say you lock in that price, right? $2. So now when it goes from like $2 to like $2.50, this contract gives you the right to still buy it at $2. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, because you locked in that $2 price. Mm -hmm. So therefore, let's just say if you bought shares, you'd already make profit. 50, you already make 50 cent profit per share. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I'm Good. starting. It's starting to make more sense. The wheels so, are starting to turn. <laughs> yeah. So for the two dollar um call. option, right? The two dollar call yep. option, you would pay the forty eight dollars that locks in the one hundred shares of the stock at the two dollar price. Mm -hmm. And, and now, if it goes up to two fifty, you could still buy those two hundred shares for that. But the the, the, be, the beauty, the beautiful part is that we never have to buy shares. That's right. the sex and condoms. Mm -hmm. Instead, let's just say this goes up like well, it's two forty eight. Let's say it goes up, um, fifty cents, right? So from two forty eight, two forty seven to um two ninety seven. Let's say it goes up to two ninety seven a share by tomorrow, some miracle, right? <laughs> let's just say that happens. So it goes up to two. 2297 tomorrow. Now, here's what's gonna happen. This is literally like a chain. It goes up 50 cents. The distance between these two strike between these two strike prices is 50 cents. You following me? The one that you're next to and the one above it? Yep. The, the, yep. Between the difference between two dollars and a dollar fifty is 50 cents. Okay, the one okay. The dollar fifty the, and the one mm -hmm. above. So so now. What I'm doing is that I'm, I'm, I'm playing out the scenario that what would happen to this $48 option if the price were to move up 50 cents by tomorrow? Well, this is what would happen. The option you paid $48 would be worth $305. You'd be up $250 on this option if you bought it and if it went up to $297 by tomorrow. Highly unlikely though, but you understand? I'm trying to. Cause, cause Why? Because it's like a chain. Okay, so, so it's levels. Yeah, because this number is going to change, right? And these numbers are all in relation to this number. So when it moves up the chain, now the prices move up with it. Does that make sense? Yes. So then this would move up here. No, no, this would move down here. And then this would move down here. So this would take its place and it would take that's place. Only reason why I can estimate that is because I did a 50 cent move, which is exactly the distance between these two strikes. Right. So literally, you can use the chain to know how much money you can make in the future. That was some advanced stuff I just showed you. Yeah, you lose me <laughs> a little bit, but I'm trying yeah. to follow. Mm -hmm. But the point, but the point being this is that once you because you lock in that two dollar price options make money faster than stocks so like i so 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 you see 50, 50 remember we did an example to 50 cent move on 100 shares is 50 dollars right but 50 cent move on on this option is 250 dollars so i paid less i didn't put up 200 but i made more profit does that make sense mm -hmm. So that is why options are very attractive because what happens is that it has a multiplier effect. The more it goes your way, the more money you make each time. It goes, keeps going your way. All right. Um, all right. So I'm just going to stop the beginning, the beginner part there. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the charts for everybody else um, on like the plays that I'm making. But just this piece right here, I want you to... Um, I'll probably just put up the, the PowerPoint or send you the PowerPoint and put it up and just yep. to study that, just to start to familiarize yourself. Thank you so much. That would be amazing. Because mm, I don't want to overwhelm your, because it gets, a, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs>
So I'll just stop there. So now um, let's talk about um, what's going on in the market. All right, guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about gold and oil, and maybe even the dollar. Yeah, so there's a lot of correlations in the market that you guys um, sh should know or should learn. Um, so um, if you notice gold, let's start with gold. Um, so gold is going up a lot. If you, if you notice, like gold has been ripping like way back um, in March, March 8th, gold had hit about one. 180 this this is the gold stock i know some of you guys do forex so the numbers are different but the chart is the same let me take out some of these things too like i don't need all this um take out the vwap i'll just add the other stuff for now so if you see um yeah may um goes about 193 93 dollars and you see since then gold plummeted Oh, this is this is 2022 by the way 2022 plummeted um november uh, about 150 and now we're approaching back at those all-time although well, i won't say all-time but i'll say 52 week highs because at least all year it's the highest has been so now gold is on that tier now why is gold moving so much anybody anybody know say it again bro um anybody know why gold is running up so much right now Anybody have a clue? Because of the country's jumping. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say it's because of the countries that are dumping the U.S. dollar. Yep. Yep. Whenever, whenever, because the dollar is a safe haven for pretty much the whole world. So whenever people get fearful of the dollar, they're going to run to gold. And then the, another, another hedge that they run to is crypto. So gold and crypto are tend to be two hedges against the dollar. Anybody not know what a hedge is? All right. Basically where you can protect your assets. Yep. So so it, it has an inverse relationship. When dollar goes up, gold goes down. When gold goes up, dollar goes down. That's the inverse relationship. So that that that's that's how you can gauge it, you know. So, um, so if you guys look, um, the way I would play gold right now, there's there's, there's a lot of ways you can play. But um, you guys know I made this trend line right here that um I'm really trying to see if gold will retest. But it seems like this is like the most retest that gold tends to make because gold has been running like it, it it'll break a level then it'll mount that level. So like look, it broke this level right here. Like gold broke this level right here. And now it mounted on top of it. That's that breakout and retest. So th these retests are like, you know, really key sniper entries if you can um, be patient and catch them. You know, like, like, like notice right here, it broke out, it retested. Broke out, retested. You know, and this is what you call a healthy growth pattern. And that's what you see when stocks are actually um, really um, on, a, on a strong trend. If they keep making that pattern. So um structurally is this pattern right here let's see put my slide right here uh, all right you guys see you guys see this right here yes take a screenshot of this right here everybody because this is what tells you what's going on in the big picture while all the turbulence is happening in the market. As long as these things are being respected, you know whether or not you should stay in the trade or not. So when you're, when you're in a downtrend, how do you know you're in a downtrend? Anybody? When you're making lower lows. Mm -hmm. Lower lows and lower highs. And then how do you know you're in an uptrend? Higher highs. Higher lows and higher highs. Higher, 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 higher. All right. So, so, so until that changes, you the trend is your friend. You want to follow this trend until it changes. When will be an example of a trend change? This would be an example of a trend trend change. 
the head and shoulder pattern. It's called a head and shoulders because this right here, um, this is the head right here. Oh, really big. This is the head right here. This is the um, left shoulder. This is the right shoulder. So notice that we're making lower low, lower highs and lower lows. But what happens right here? We stop making lower lows. This is the last lower low, right? All of a sudden we make a higher low. That means that we're starting to change, but we don't get that confirmation until we make a higher high. So we were making lower highs and lower lows, and then now we start making higher lows and then higher highs. That already shows you that we started to reverse. So basically, let's say if I was in this play and I, I was betting to the downside, I would stay in, inside of this play until something like this happened. I'm like, wait a minute, we're making higher lows. We we're just making lower lows. That would be my indication that maybe I should take profits. So now let's look at a real chart and do the, do the same thing. So now if you, if you go to um, gold, what do you guys see here with gold? What is gold doing? Higher lows and higher highs. Exactly. You see, every time it comes low, if it comes down, it can come down all the way here. But guess what? It's still higher than this low. It's still higher than this low. It's still way higher than this low. So and so we and so it starts breaking some of these lows coming down. Oh, and then this thing we come down. Oh, we making a lower low. Wait a minute. You guys get what I'm saying? So this right here is called market structure. When you learn to understand the structure of the candles, you can know when the tide is changing based off the structure alone. You don't need any yeah. indicators once you learn how this to the structure. This uh, trend is so strong, and you know, as soon as it breaks the structure, you, you can just hop in. Just mm -hmm. the strength. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? You, you know, uh, you, you trade gold too, or no? Nah? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Because I know, um, yeah, I was looking at the chart. I know it's a, uh, it's an institutional buying zone somewhere, like, you know, down there, it's, it's, it's doing higher highs and higher lows, but mm -hmm. it's somewhere like above where you're looking at around that area, like a little bit above oh, where yeah. your rectangle is. Now where your rectangle is on the bottom. Oh, this one right here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, this could be a zone. If we come back, I could, yeah. see, if we, I could see it's bouncing from the zone. But I'll, I'll wait, you know? Um, so, that's, so that's gold, right? So next is oil. So, um, so notice that, I, okay, so let me just explain this, right? So I'm, I'm looking gold, um, the GLD, that's, that's the S&P 500 gold trust. Um, if I was to do Forex, it would be, I think, XAU, something like, what was it, XUA? I'm probably forgetting. XAU, USD. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> I knew it was those letters just coming from the combo. Yeah, so notice it's the same chart. But the only difference is that there's no gaps. Like the last one had more spaces in between the candles. This one doesn't. But it still is the same chart, the same pattern. This, you notice the same high up from, from March. So, um, so that's cool. So now, um, now the way I'm going to look oil, I'm going to look at it the same way. I'm going to look. So I'm going to look at the futures. So CL, this is the crude oil futures. But what you're going to notice now is that it looks just like the oil stocks. So look, this is crude oil. 